And we're here. And we're live. And this is an impromptu setup of podcast, but you know, there's there's some players in the house. So I thought, Mystery in the house. There we go. We've got Alvin. Murray is in the house. There we go. Playing with Kava. And I am Bexter. And we just thought we'd turn it on and see what comes up. Now, we talk about pickup pretty much 24 <laughs> 7. So at some point during this conversation, I have a suspicion that the topic is going to steer its way to women. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so turn this off if you're not into women. Uh, hey, whatever you're into, that's all cool. Oh, it but... just showed that one viewer left. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Cecil. <laughs> so, uh, you've, Alvaro, you've come down all the way from Madrid to film a little thing with us and hang out because we haven't seen yeah, you since, course. where was it, Mexico, for your birthday? Yeah, yeah. Where you were we on top Mexico form. Together to my birthday. My birthday, couldn't, we couldn't go into the boat. Fuck it, you know, but we were jumping. You didn't jump with me, you know. We, we were meeting, <laughs> meeting girls, you know, uh, eating in a buffet and bringing a lot of Mexican girls. So that was really cool. What, what I find with you, and I found this in a few other people, but especially you, is when I'm trying to go from A to B, when I'm with you, I have to go from A, B, C, D, E, and sometimes back to B, and then all the way to Z, because you stop nearly every nice girl on the street. <laughs> yeah. So just to go and get a quick bite to eat or a cup of coffee yeah. could take all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the reason why I have in my house, my basement, where I work, you know? Wait, I was I, gonna say where you keep because, them. I was like getting yeah. worried. If I have uh, a work, like 20 minutes from my house, I never work. You know, that's the reason why I have my work in my own house. Yeah. But yes. Well, you've, you've selected your location where you live. Without because girls. In with a location with without girls for, yes, focusing on business. Okay, fair, fair. What, what uh, I recommend to people, what they do is, like a lot of guys, they say, there's no women where they live, right? So move, right? You don't have that issue. There, there are places that you can pick up women yeah. at near where you live, right? You don't have to go too far. So what I recommend is that you recognize that there are three locations that all pickups go through. The first is the attraction location. So do you live near an attraction location? The next is the comfort location. Do you know where you're taking the group of people you've just met to hang out and get to know each other more? Do you know that location? And then the third is getting them back to your apartment or to your uh, condo. So those three locations have to be visited w within every pickup. And when I was living down in LA, I made sure that those three locations were not more than two minutes walk away from each other. Yeah, cool. I was living right off of Sunset Boulevard. So that was our pickup location or our target rich venues were there. And then there was this restaurant where we could grab a bite to eat 24 hours called Mel's Diner. I, I went there. The very famous yeah, Mel's Diner. Uh, you have got to try the chocolate milkshake. It is to die for. At least that's what I'd say. And they'd come. <laughs> right? they bring all the boys to the yard. They brought them all and then some and a bag of chips. Uh, and the third is bringing them right up to where I was living, which was less than a two minute walk from Mel's Diner. So all three locations were visited within two minutes walk from each other. And I thought that was just a trifecta. Yeah, you, you did, was that planned when you that bought was, the place? That was, like, we need to get a place near these, these points. That's exactly what I did. And before then, I, I just accepted the reality that I lived 25 minutes from downtown Toronto and it was always cold, you know, it's cold more than it's warm up there. And I was accepting it. So it wasn't until I was moving down to LA that I had that epiphany, that, that uh, desire, that call to action to actually put together a nice setup for me so I had yeah. less logistical problems. Yeah. That's, that's a logistical problem if you go to a club and you don't know where to take them to afterwards. Oh, what's open now? Oh, where do, they're, they're coming outside with us. So do I take them home? I wanna take them home, uh, but my place isn't ready, you know? And that's just setting up for failure. A lot of people shoot themselves yeah. in the foot. Yeah. They do that on purpose. It's uh, self-defeating behavior. They fear success. So uh, that's the thought for the day. Don't fear success. Handle the logistics and get the girl. 
So what's been the most interesting thing about your journey so far? Because you've been all over the place. You've been in Mexico, Cuba, all, all over. So Mexico, Cuba, I've been in New York, LA. I met you in, in LA. LA. Yep, we had I've fun. Been, I've been in London. But my, my best experience, by the way, was in Mexico because I've been with you, I've been with, with Mystery. So we made a, a really good team and I try new things, you know. When I was in Playa del Carmen, I met a bisexual girl. She know me because of, of the YouTube videos. And the time we, we made the bootcamp, I invite her to come into the, to the bootcamp. So with her, I can try really, really new things. The people normally think that the Mexican girls are really close in mind and they can do crazy stuff, sexual crazy stuff. And I discovered that, no, Mexican girls are the same that Spanish girls are the same that Chinese girls. Attraction is attraction it's in every fucking part of the world. Attraction, yeah. as David D'Angelo David says, D'Angelo. Yeah. is not a choice. Of course. Yeah. Everywhere in the world, every woman has the same emotional circuitry. It's as simple as that. And so change your mood, not her mind. And be attractive. If you are attractive, the girls in every part of the world are going to find you attractive. So How do you define that? How do you define attraction? What, what do we as men have to do in order to trigger attraction? For me, the attractions start by you. If you are happy with your life, if you have a really attractive life, if you travel, if you have a good job, if you work on your body, in you, if you have good conversation, all the girls are going to be attracted to you, you know, because you are not the typical guy. You are a guy that makes all the time count when, he, when you are with the girl. So if you take care of yourself, the girls are going to be interested in you. Then if you have an attractive life, you can use techniques, you can use routines and they are going to work really well because they are congruent, you know, and if everything is congruent, is if everything is real, it's mm-hmm. going to work no matter why. Congruence. Congruence is where what you say and how you say it match. Because sometimes you can be incongruent when you learn someone else's story. Yeah. Someone tells a, a story and you want to use it in field, but you haven't had the chance to repeat it a few times, right? So then what you say and how you say it just don't make sense. And it comes off, well, people in field, if they say to you, is this a survey? (laughs) Then it feels scripted to them and they can't help but note that and oftentimes they'll comment on it and you'll blow up, you'll blow up from the set. You'll blow the set out. Or another one they say is, what are you selling? Right, exactly. Or are you an actor? You've got, you sounds like a pitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, like that's, and that's just incongruence. Yeah. What you should do in order to solve incongruence, because you may have some with some of your routines. They're new routines. You read them off the internet. You know they work because they're uh, in the hands of capable uh, POAs around the world. And you know that it's not the material, but it's you that's making this set fall apart around you when you throw in that new piece of material. Do it a dozen times. You know, a comedian, when they say a joke for the first time, They'll want to put it in their act because if it's so funny, it's worth putting in their act. Next thing you know, it doesn't work. And and it's the amateur comedian who gives up, who says, oh, I can't afford to run material that isn't going to get a laugh. But it's the pro that knows you got to do it a dozen times to find that timing that was in it the first time you you said it that was worth writing down to put into your show in the first place. And also the girls are smarter than the guys so I agree. they can detect who is go- who is fake exactly and, and if you tell a routine who is not your routine you are going you are not going to be real mm-hmm. and the girl is going to tell fuck off you are lying to me like even even murder mary shag i mean it's a generic routine it's not a story that's personal it's a game that you play yeah. You know, we're going to play a, a game. It's called Murder, Mary, Shag. I'm going to pick out three people. You tell me yeah, which one you'd murder, which one you'd marry, which one you'd <laughs> shag, and why. And you say that to the girl. And after she's, uh, you know, answered, you say to her, now you select three people and, uh, and I'll answer, right? So yeah. it's a fun little game. It comes from Howard Stern, uh, Howard Stern's radio show. He was talking about it once. And now it's a popular game to play in field uh, with a lot of pickup artists, right? It's kind of a, like a go-to routine, in fact. 
like if you don't know what to do with the set, what are you gonna do? I have to fill some time, where Mary Shag will do, right? It's not personal, it's just a game. Yeah. But uh, if you haven't done it a dozen times, you won't want to do it. Yeah. If you've done it a dozen times, you'll want to do it for the next dozen times because it'll be nice and smooth, just like the way this rant came out. It's a yeah, game. Exactly. I also smooth, like to play because the... I've done it before. Yeah. I also like to play the, in, in dates the question game. You know? The question game, yeah. yeah. You have to ask a, a question to a girl. There are rules to yeah, the question game. And, and you can't repeat the same question. So, so it escalates. So you are going to be escalating. You are going to talk first when she was small. Then you are going to talk about feelings. Then you are going to talk about sex. So you allow yourself and allow her to go more in an emotional and sexual way. And, and they you can't back down. Yeah. Once you ask the question, how many boyfriends have you had? She can't say how many girlfriends have you had? Because that's the same question, yeah. isn't it? At least you can argue that. And it's a game. And it's a game. And it's, yeah. it's a game of frames. Yeah, whose frame is stronger, hers or yours. Yeah. So you want to escalate to get to juicy questions yeah. before she does. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah I love course. that one. I love that one. And you get to know each other. And it's something to do in qualifying. I think it's really powerful to qualify, um, especially, you know, the hot girls that you really fancy. Yeah. Because they don't get qualified a lot. They get yes men constantly. Mm. Just treating them like a princess, putting them on a pedestal. As soon as you throw a couple of qualifiers in, yeah. that Im immediately shows, okay, the game is on. I'm not some sucker you're going to walk over and, and you've got to fight for me. And that is structuring the pursuit, structuring yes. the challenge to be pursued. You cannot get a girl chasing you unless you do something like that. Yeah. If you're not qualifying the girl, well, then she? how can she chase that? How is she going to make herself qualify if you don't have a race? She's going to be attracted by the idea that she wants to pursue you because that is attraction, right? You That's want to pursue someone. The not, oh, I'll have them. Yeah. The narrative of all pickups, of all great pickups, should be that the girl is chasing you. Yeah. Not that you are chasing the girl. And most guys, they, they blunder there. They end up feeling like, wow, what do I do? How do I get this girl? As opposed to, how do I get this girl off me? Yeah. yeah. You have more, more chance of getting the girl interested in you if you back away from the girl. That's why in Kino, when you're touching, when you're, when you're escalating Kino, the it's the uh, roll-off that is where all the power is at. It's not in touching the girl. It's not in hugging the girl. It's in letting go of the girl and letting her recognize that that hug was insignificant to you, that you're just a huggy guy. And it gets her then physiologically accustomed to your touch over time. Yeah, and also... Right always you have to be on the most comfortable situation for you make the girl work for you exactly that's why one down. thing i do is with my keno She'll speed it up i will do something i call push away keno and i'll do it with two fingers of the back of my hand so it's non-sexual and i'll actually like sort of push them a bit and move away step right. back so it's like even though they're getting the keno this is just a light touch with the back yeah, of your fingers like, on her shoulder <laughs> and just a, a little pushing her away well, by and move back as well so you're right. like distancing yourself so you're yeah. actually touching her so they're getting the keno but they're also getting the the uh, rapport break right because you're pushing away an yeah, inch with rather the back than of your fingers, though. It's rather not aggressive. than it's not aggressive and the opposite of that is which is isn't good, in. is pulling them in by their shoulder you know, when with, you know with when guys fingers. try to talk in their girl's ear and they're don't pull pulling her in. the girl in. Don't pull her in towards you. Instead, you push, push her away. away. And then she'll feel that void and will have to fill the void by re-engaging you, by maybe even pushing you back. Yeah, they might push you back or they'll just step closer or they'll laugh at it. Like, yes. be amused. What, what I notice is their feet will turn towards me yeah. and they'll step in. When I step back, they step in and I know that that's what I want to happen. That's the narrative. That's the pickup. The pickup is making her chase me. All right, guys, we are making this uh, short and sweet. We hope that this was of value to you. Uh, Alvaro and Bexter and I are now going to get out of the house. I hope you do too. So until next time, keep it up. Hey guys, while we still have your attention, on August 4th, 5th, and 6th, Bexter and I are headed to downtown Barcelona for three days and two nights of boot camp weekend. And you know what that means, Bexter? It's time to grind. It's time to grind.
Limited seating is available because it can't be a cock farm. Fair enough. So, to purchase your golden ticket, do so early because before Sunday the 23rd of July, midnight, you'll get it for only 997 pounds. Regular 1297 pounds. And you can use your local currency converter to find out what that is for you. Friday the 4th, we begin at 6 p.m. We go till 9 p.m. That's a seminar. Then at 10.30 p.m. until 2.30 in the morning or later, we are in field. You will be in field with us, Mystery and Baxter, on Saturday the 5th from 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. seminar. Then, once again, in field we go. Then on Sunday at 2 p.m. until 6.30 p.m., we debrief. And that means we find where, your, where the holes are in your game so that we can fill them in for the next six weeks while you integrate everything you've learned over this long weekend. So we would love to take you through the nuts and bolts of everything, systematically break down what you're doing wrong and correct, and really enhance your game to the next level. So get your golden ticket now, save money, get yourself a flight and an Airbnb. If you need to, you can even share an Airbnb with a fellow student to save some coin on that. And we hope to see you there, Barcelona. August 4th, 5th, and 6th. It's going to be magical.